let's add some custom wood to Minecraft. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom wood to Minecraft. And this will include the normal logs, the planks, the stripped variants of the planks, or rather the stripped variants of the logs and the stripped variants of the wood. This is all very interesting. And there are actually some interesting things that we have to do, which is kind of weird, but it is what it is. So first of all, we're actually going to go into our custom package and we're going to make a new Java class called the mod flammable rotated pillar block. Now, if that's not a mouthful, then I don't know what is. It's pretty crazy. This will extend the rotated pillar block class and we're going to hover over this, create constructor matching super. And if this annoys you, click on it, press shift F6 and then change it to properties. Now, the contents of which is class, basically, I'm going to actually copy over and I will explain all of this. And this is, of course, basically, as always, available to you in the description below, GitHub repository and individual gist as well. Now, these things have not been implemented yet, but we're going to implement those in just a moment, of course. And then this will also make a lot of sense. So what do we have here? Well, the flammable rotated pillar block is made because, well, then the rotated pillar block is also flammable. If we take a look at the pillar block, this is the block that is used for, as you can see, for example, um, when we can actually see it, it's also used for some other stuff like basalt, things like that, but it's also used for oak wood or for logs, for example. So it is used for, well, these types of blocks and this is why we're basically going to use it as well. Now we need to make this flammable because this is the only way in Forge that we can make blocks flammable. There's another way uh, where we can basically just make an anonymous class and override those methods in an anonymous class. However, it does fill up the mod blocks class quite a bit. So this is why I, I don't really prefer it. And also beware if you have multiple, if you have multiple logs that you want to add and stripped variants, this is the method that you basically need to override as well. And for each a different log you need one if statement so you can see if state is in mod blocks and then you have your log and then here you return the actual uh, log the stripped variant that you want returned so this is all that you really need to do so you can basically always copy this if statement for each stripped variant that you want now this includes if you have 20 different logs then yes you will need 20 different if statements in here you can probably also make a switch statement i believe i'm not 100 percent sure but this should also work whatever the case may be it just is what it is. This is probably the easiest version to actually do this. So now let's go into our mod blocks class. Then let's actually take a look at the blocks that we want to implement. Let's actually get the newcomer plant and be wary that we are want to make the register block method instead of the register block without block item. That's very important. And then we're also going to add mod creative mode tab dot tutorial tab. And then this is going to be the ebony underscore log course changing the name here as well ebony underscore log and then this will be the mod rotated flammable craziness block basically and that should be that and then let's actually copy this so we're going to need this four times but then also going to have ebony wood or oh, also make sure that this copies the oak log i think that that makes the most sense this is the ebony wood changing the name here as well the class is the same and then here it should copy the oak wood right there and then this one is the stripped ebony underscore log same here so this is going to be the stripped underscore ebony log which is of course going to copy the stripped oak log there you go and then last but not least actually not last but for those four stripped ebony underscore wood and then same here stripped underscore ebony underscore wood which is then just going to copy over the stripped oak wood. There you go. We're also going to just remove the no occlusion here because those are actually not needed, those calls. And then with that, those four, you know, flammable rotated pillar blocks are done. And then here, they, the arrows should also go away. And now we still need the planks. Now I'm actually going to copy those over from, you know, my already pre-programmed stuff. Like I said, all of this is available to you in the description below get a repository and individual gist as well and you can see the ebony planks here are actually an anonymous class where i override the is flammable the get flammability and the get fire spread methods now we can actually take a look at i believe it is in the fire block class so let's actually take a look here fire block i believe that at the bottom here somewhere we have the definitions of what can be there it is so these are the flammabilities of this fire block you can see that, for example, planks have a encouragement of 5 and a flammability of 20. So this is why 
um, well, we need to use those methods. We sadly can't really uh, change this, you know, method in the fire block. Uh, Forge has not given us any tools to do that. So therefore, this is the, well, the only method that is not convoluted, let's say. But this is not actually all that we need to do because there are two or three things. Um, of course, you know, we also have to have the as asset. So there's a bunch of block states, uh, JSON files that are also needed, but also some tags. But let's first of all get the uh, block states JSON files in. So those are going to be for the wood, for the stripped variants and the logs, as well as the planks, of course. This should be five of them. There you go. Now, overall, the all the rotated pillar blocks have three different variants, as you can see, axis X, axis Y, and axis Z. This is simply to reflect the way that you can set down the, well, rotated blocks. The planks, basically, in all JSON files are very, well, very boring, to be honest. They are just normal blocks, basically, that have uh, nothing interesting going on there. And all of the other um, block states, JSON files, as I've said, are pretty much the same thing. So that is a thing to keep in mind here. Well, then we basically have the translation. Let's just copy this over as well. There you go. So log planks would the stripped variants. Uh, there you go. When it comes to the block model files, we have also some interesting stuff. That's actually going to require two different ones for uh, some of them, but not all of them. So this is a uh, very interesting. The planks being the most boring ones, basically. But let's actually take a look. So first of all, like I said, the planks is just cube all, nothing interesting going on. You see that for the wood itself, you actually only have one. For the log, you have one. And for the uh, for the log, you have actually two, horizontal and the normal one. So you can see that this is basically, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here. I can just highly recommend taking a look at this. Or you can also, of course, always take a look at the external libraries going down here to, where is it, client extra 1.18.1 or whatever your version might be. In the micro folder, we have the models, of course, all available here, for example, for the, you know, Acacia. So this would be the block models. Or, you know, Acacia Planks. I mean, this is exactly what I've said. Just cube all. Or, for example, the Acacia Wood. So you can always take a look at that as well if you want any, you know, if you have uh, something else in mind, for example. And then, of course, the five different item models as well, which are needed. And then we would actually be pretty much done with the JSON files. There you go. Oh, that's actually in the block. That's not quite right. We want this in the item. There you go. Right, those are just, they, they just point back to the block model JSON file as we've seen. I mean, pretty much at this point, I don't know how many times, but plenty of times. So, this should be nothing too new for you at this point. And then let's go with the textures, which are, of course, also available. And if I, you know, if I do say so myself, they are great. They are actually, once again, of course, done by Nano Attack. And the ebony textures, I really like them. Like, that wood is freaking amazing. I'm very happy that we've chosen that wood. To basically use in this tutorial series. Now on to the tags. So the tags are very interesting because there are two tags that we are definitely are going to need and those are both in the Minecraft folder in the tags blocks and then I'm just going to copy both of those over. So this is going to be the logs tag and the logs that burn tag. You can see that they actually point to another tag. This is how you point to another tag. You put a hashtag in here, then the actual mod ID, and then the name of that tag. So we're going to actually add this tag as well. Like always, of course, everything available to you in the description below. These just list all of the, well, the rotated pillar blocks, basically, that we've added. And why do we need them to be in the uh, logs that burn? Well, the logs that burn, uh, the way that this works is that they then are added as fuel to be used in for the furnace for example and then the logs one you need this for when we add a tree just later i believe that it is in the next tutorial actually already the leaves will decay unless they are in a certain radius of a block that is inside of the logs tag this is why this is incredibly important so keep that in mind as well and that is pretty much actually all that we need to do to add custom wood to minecraft that also burns which is actually fairly uh, important because that's like one of the things that in the uh, past I have actually just glanced over so keep that in mind as well also there was a tiny little typo here if you uh, type this in wrong as well please be sure to fix that and now let's see if it works all right we find ourselves back in Minecraft as you can see all of the different logs have been added to the game and let's set them down and as you can see 
all of them looking absolutely great. I really, really like the uh, ebony planks. Uh, they, I, I just like the way that it looks, and it's, it's really amazing. So as you can see, you know, every way that I set this down, it works, and you know, they rotate the, the actual fixtures rotate exactly how we would expect them to. And let's just, you know, let's let's get some arson here as well with a little bit of a flint and steel. So let's just get this as well and let's just see whether or not it burns so it should in theory you know start spreading uh, on its own and it definitely shouldn't go out there you go so it actually did start spreading this is exactly what we would expect from the flammability of those blocks and i mean as you can see it just it basically just works so there you go one of the blocks actually already disappeared so there you go everything working exactly how you'd expect it to and that's actually how easy it is to add some custom wood to minecraft Right, like always, all of the code is available to you in the description below, get a pass or an individual gist as well. But otherwise, this would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated and I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.